this is one of the advantages that he has given us as believers against the wiles of satan and to ensure that the victory won for us on the cross becomes a, an experience for us in our daily lives praying always in the spirit declare in the name of jesus i receive grace to pray every time to pray always scripture says pray without ceasing it must become a reality for every one of us who wants to be victorious all right and i'll take time why 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 must we speak in tongues we have people who ask those kind of questions why must i speak in tongues won't i go to heaven if i don't speak in tongues yes you'll go to heaven no ah you will go to heaven all right heaven is not the challenge here how you will be when you get to heaven is the challenge all right that's just the challenge so it's not by force to speak in tongues oh but if you want to live a victorious life then praying in the spirit is a necessity if you want to travel to whatever country even ghana here you can choose any means of transportation one by one is bicycle or even before bicycle we have wheelbarrow so i'll say wheelbarrow the next one bicycle the next one kekena pep the next one motorcycle what you call a kada the next one eh? power bike that's something too the next one trailer what else again mikra what else again eh? there's even like these bears yeah you can you can trek have you noticed that people do that now for for clout they'll trek from one place to another and then we celebrate them why is it worthy of celebration because no person in their right senses chooses to trek from lagos to abuja have you noticed that uh -huh. It's just common sense that nobody will be going through that unless you're looking for clout yeah unless you're looking for popularity why would you want to go to heaven and not pray in the spirit unless you want to celebrate how much stress you could endure in life without an advantage is somebody following what i'm saying does it make sense to somebody why will you just choose suffering with your own hand? It's like they should blindfold you so that you can fight your enemy. And you say, that's what I want. So they can beat you, beat you black and blue. That's what it means to be arguing. If you want to receive, receive. Instead of arguing that we don't need it because you are frustrated with how many times you came out and did not receive god gave this to you as an advantage is somebody following what i'm saying yeah so please embrace it and don't just say i have received tongues no no it's time to use it people will say tongues is just your matriculation number into the school of power and that you speak in tongues to move from level to level so the fact that you received it 10 years ago does not mean you are not still in 100 level till now are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. The fact that your tongues has not even changed already shows you that you are still at the ankle level. It's still the low, 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 low for the past 15 years. I was there too, Shiketela, Shiketela, four years. And I was thinking that it was God that was not changing. The, like, if you keep on praying, you will shift. It will be shifting. I mean, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Most of you have experienced one or two, three, you know, times it's shifted. It means the water level has moved from ankle to your knee, from knee to waist, from waist to shoulder, and so on and so forth. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. You keep digging. So pray always in the spirit. Glory to God forever. What's the one thing holding you back from living the life God has called you to? I bet it's fear. 
fear that whispers, you're not enough, you can't do it, you'll fail. But what if I told you, God never intended for you to live in fear. In fact, he has given you everything you need to overcome it. Today, we're going to talk about how to break free from the chains of fear and walk in the boldness that God has already placed inside of you. And it all starts with one thing, faith. Let's dive in. Fear is something we all face. It can be paralyzing, overwhelming, and even make us doubt God's promises. But here's what we need to understand. Fear is not from God. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Let that sink in for a moment. Fear is not your identity. Power, love, and a sound mind are. Fear doesn't get the final say in your life. God's power does. I know some of you are watching this right now feeling like fear has gripped every area of your life. Fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of the unknown. But here's the good news. Jesus is greater than your fear. When you feel anxious or afraid, you're not meant to carry that weight alone. In fact, Jesus invites us in. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Fear can weigh you down. It can make you feel like you're carrying a burden too heavy to bear. But God is saying, come to me. Give that fear to me and I'll give you peace. When you put your trust in God, you start to realize that he's bigger than your fears. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 reminds us, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is literally promising that you don't have to do it alone. He's holding you up even when the fear feels overwhelming. What if, instead of focusing on your fears, you started focusing on God's promises? Practical steps to overcome fear. So, how do we practically overcome fear in our daily lives? Here are three key steps. Number one, meditate on God's word. The Bible is full of promises that combat fear. One of my favorites is Joshua chapter one, verse nine. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Read scriptures like this daily, remind yourself of God's truth, and fear will lose its grip on your heart. Number two, pray boldly. Prayer is not just asking God for things, it's an exchange. When you come to God in prayer, give him your fear and receive his peace. Philippians chapter four, verses six to seven tells us, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Number three, take action in faith. Fear tries to freeze you in place, but faith moves you forward. Whatever God is calling you to do, do it despite the fear. That's where real courage comes from. Not the absence of fear, but moving forward, through it with the strength of God by your side. In conclusion, listen, I don't know what fears you're facing right now, but I do know this. God has already given you the power to overcome them. You don't have to live in fear anymore. You can live boldly, confidently, and courageously because God is with you. Remember Romans chapter 8, verse 31. If God is for us, who can be against us? So, don't let fear have the final word in your life. Instead, let faith rise up. Let God's promises lead the way. If this message has touched you, don't keep it to yourself. Share it with someone who needs to hear it. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more content that will strengthen your walk with Christ. Let's break free from fear together.